Hey guys, welcome back to Sudoku Maniac. So before we proceed with our video, just a small update. Teet and I had a discussion and I think we are going to finalize his live stream with no, on the first week of August, the exact date and time. Hopefully we'll know by this weekend. So stay tuned for the updates and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that as and when we updated, you get the notification and are aware of the exact date and time. All right now, we'll just take a short break from our learning the solving techniques on the basic variance because again, this week we are going to have the last round of the Sudoku Grand Prix from the by the World Puzzle Federation. Right. So the information booklet was revealed today, and it had some very interesting variants. Now this round is being hosted by the French authors, rather just one author, Bastien. And Bastien is one of the top solvers in the world today. So you can expect some really good Sudokus from him. He is a very good setter as well. So I tried to pick up some of the uncommon puzzles that were there in the information booklet and I thought let's create a walkthrough on those so that people who are not aware of this can understand how to approach these puzzles. And like always, I've also created a, rather I made a quick bonus puzzle for you on this liar diagonal as well. So this puzzle from the information booklet, as well as the one that I made, the link to solve them online will be there in the description. So you can try out both the puzzles, All right? So coming back to the puzzle, this is known as a liar diagonal Sudoku. The rules of classic Sudoku apply. Secondly, of the two main marked diagonals, only one will have exactly one to nine digits without any repetition. Whereas the second or the other diagonal would have at least one digit which would be repeating. What it means is even more than one digit can repeat. It's not necessary that only one digit will. The key word here is at least one digit will repeat. So it's not necessary that if we have found out one digit which is remaining, that means the other digits will fall automatically in place. Not necessary. All right. And neither does it mean that it will be occur only a second time and not a third time. That's not clear from the rules. So let's not make assumptions. All right. So how do we approach this? Like I always say, any variant for that matter started off like a classic. Especially these kind of puzzles where you don't know which diagonal is the correct diagonal and which is the liar diagonal, a diagonal. Because it is part of our solving to identify the correct diagonal. Alright. So the first thing is 4, 4 has to be in these two but we got a 4 here. So we place the 4. 9, 9. That gives us a 9 here, which gives us a 9 here, and that's the next 9. Alright, so the 9 can be here and in these two. Alright, now we don't know which diagonal is the correct one and which is a liar diagonal. So I am not assuming that the top right to bottom left is the correct diagonal. So I am, in a way, ignoring the diagonal lines for now till I am assured of which is the correct diagonal. So I'm going to, and I would suggest you do the same when you're solving this, ignore the diagonal lines and treat it like a classic because only by following the classic rules, you'll be able to come to a point where you're able to identify the correct diagonal. All right, next, six and eight cannot be here. So this is a six and eight, but with the six blocked here, six is locked in these two, right? Which makes this is an eight, this is a six. Eight, eight, eight cannot be here. So this becomes my eight. Eight cannot be in these two, cannot be here. That's my eight. This is an eight. So again, this is an eight, eight, eight. And this becomes a pair of eight, nine. Eight. And now the Oh, there are only three numbers missing in column 9, 2, 7, and 8, right? 
So I can add the 2, 7 here, 2, 7 along with 8, 2, 7 and 8. So that gives me 1 here by classic rules, and this is a 3 and a 4, which makes this a 3 and this as a 7. I get a 7 here, and by classic rules, missing digits are 5 and 6, so that's a 5, that's a 6, because we got a, already got a 5 in row 3, all right? So we made some progress, but yet we have not been able to identify which is the correct diagonal. So let's continue solving like a classic pseudo. Missing digits in row 2 are 1, 2 and 6. Oh, we got a 1, 6 here. So this is a 6 by classic rules. 1 has to be here, which makes this a 1, 2 and a 3. We are nearing the end of the puzzle, yet we do not know which is the correct die. All right. Now the missing numbers here are 2, 7 and 9. So that's a 2, 7, 2, 7, 9, 2, 7, 9. That gives me a 5 and a 3. So that's a 5. That's a 3. Here would be the last number 5, 1 and 2. So this is a 3. This is a 4 and a 3. All right. Some progress. Now, here is a small trick that you can use. Now, in the central box, we had 9 that can be placed in, at the junction of the two diagonals or below that. All right. But now, when I look at both the diagonals, right, I have already got a 9 on the top left to bottom right diagonal as well as the top right to bottom left. So, basically, what it means is I cannot have a 9 in row 5, column 5. Now, this is a very important thing that you should remember and this will apply in your competitive puzzle too. The reason being, if this was a 9, it would make both the diagonals as liar diagonals, right? Because on one diagonal, we require all the 9 digits without repetition. That means that 9 can, may repeat on the uh, one diagonal, but not on both. And this uh, row 5, column 5 being the junction point cannot have a 9 because that would make both the diagonals as liar diagonals, right? Hence, I can safely push the 9, sorry, 9 here, which makes this an 8. So the 9 is out from here, and I get a pair of 2 sets. Good. Now, 2, 7, or oh, this 8 was out. So this is a 2, 7, 2, 7. So I can safely place the 8 here. So that's a 1, 2, 7, 1, 2, 7. Again, though I have a 1, 2, I'm still placing the 1, 2 there as a pencil mark because this, for all I know, this could be the wrong die. Now, what are the missing numbers? 1, 2, 1, 2. Oh, I got a 1 here. So that's a 2, that's a 1, that's a 2. All right? Now, in row 7, the missing numbers are 1, 6, and 7. I got a 1 here. That's a 6, 7, 6, 7, and I can place the 1 there. All right? Now, 1, 2, 3 not possible, 4 is possible, 5 is not possible, 6 is possible, 7 is possible. Again, just like we eliminated the 9, I think we can eliminate the 6. Because if I, I have 6 on both the diagonals, right? So if I place a 6 here, again, the, both the diagonals would become liar diagonal. So 4, 7 is the only option there. Correct? And row 3, 4, 7. Okay, let's fill this up. 2, 4, 6, 7. 2, 4, 6, 7. Now row 3, I have a 1. 2, 4 and 7 are missing. So 2 is not there. This is a 4, 7. 2, 4, 7. 2, 4, 7. That gives me a pair of 4 and 7 here. So obviously I can eliminate the 7 from there. Uh, so that's a 6 and I get a pair of. So now that's a 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5 and a 3, 4, 5. Interesting. Now. How do we go ahead? Interesting, right? Okay, let's have a look at this. Again, this was 3, 5, and 6, so 3, 5, 
sorry, we can eliminate the 4 from here because the 4, 7 has formed a pair, right? 3, 5, 6, 3, 5, 6. What are the possibilities here? 9 is not possible, 8 is not possible, 7 is possible, 6, 5 is possible, 3 is possible, 2 is possible. But now, let's have a look. Alright, this also we already got a pair of 2, 7, right? So we can eliminate the 2, 7 from here. Yeah, because this will be a pair of 3, 5, 3, 5. Now comes the tricky part. Let's have a look at row 4, column 6. I can have a phi there which would make the bottom right, uh, left to top right diagonal as the liar. However, which would mean the other diagonal has to contain all the 5 digits, right? All the 9 digits, sorry. But I already got 1, 2, 3, 6, 8, 9. The 4, 5 and 7 are missing. So if this was supposed to be a, sorry, 5, the top right to bottom left diagonal becomes a liar diagonal and also the top left to bottom right diagonal will not have any place for the 5 to be placed. You following what I am saying? Assuming if this is the correct one, the top left to bottom right is the correct one. Then the three numbers that are required to complete the diagonal are 4, 5 and 7 which makes the top right to bottom left as a liar diagonal, correct? Not clear? Okay, we'll repeat that again. Assume if the top left to bottom right is the correct diagonal, then the 5 will be logged in the top left to bottom right diagonal, right? Which would eliminate the 5 from there, right? But if the top right to bottom left was the true diagonal, we still have, have already got a 5 there. So again, this would not be a 5. Hence, we can safely eliminate the 5 from there and that becomes your 3. And this is your 5. But again, we still have not found out which is the correct diagonal. This is one awesome puzzle. Now what? Alright. Take a look at the central cell, row 5, column 5. We have the options of 4 and 7. What would happen if this was a 7? The top right to bottom left diagonal becomes the liar diagonal, right? Because the 7 would repeat. But then if the top left to bottom right is the true diagonal, there is no place to place a 4. Or the other way to look at it is, both the diagonals, of both the diagonals, one is the true diagonal, right? And in neither of the diagonals have you placed a 4 as yet. And there are only 2 spots left in each diagonal. And this 4 eliminates the 4 from the row 6, right? So there's only one place where the 4 can be placed to complete the true diagonal because the true diagonal still requires a 4. Hence you can place the 4 there and that becomes your 7. And still we are not clear <laughs> on which is the true diagonal. Right? 
Yeah, I'm enjoying solving this. I'm just taking a pause so that you just understand how beautifully this puzzle has been crafted. All right. Okay. Now similarly, we have a two. If this was the two diagonal, this we require a seven here. Correct. But if this was a seven, this would be a two. This would become a one. Right. Because of the placement of digit. If we assume that the top left to bottom right is the true diagonal, then we require a 7, right? So if this was a 7, this would become a 2 and this would become a 1, right? But if this was a liar diagonal and the top right to bottom left is the true diagonal, then the missing digit in the true diagonal is 1. So irrespective of which is the true diagonal, the digit 1 will be placed here, which makes this a 7 and a 1, right? So I can eliminate the step. But now when I look at the top right to bottom left, I have obtained all the 9 digits. So now I know for sure the top right to bottom left is my true diagonal and the top left to bottom right is the liar diagonal, which means it should have at least one digit repeating. So I have a 2 and 7 here. If I make this a 7, this would become a normal diagonal Sudoku because again I would have 1 to 9. Right? So this is my 2. This is a 7. That's a 2. That's a 7. That's a 2. That's a 6. 7. So that's a 3. That's a 5. That's a 6. And with the 2 here, that's a 4. That's a 2, this is a 4, that's a 5 and that's a 3. I really love the way Bastian said this uh, and imagine this is just an example puzzle. So you can just imagine how beautiful the actual puzzle in the competition is going to be. Till the last stage we did not know which was the true diagram. Awesome puzzle. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you an insight on how to approach this. Ignore the diagonals till you are able to identify which is the true and which is the liar diagonal. If you did enjoy the video, do like and share it with your friends. Let us know in comments what did you like the best about it, what was your solving time. And the, you can definitely try out the bonus puzzle. I know it's not going to be as classy as this because I hurriedly made it in what about like 15 to 20 minutes since I did not have much time. So it may not be up to the standards of what Bastion has put up. But definitely it is. it does have its own tricky meandering steps which will puzzle you for a minute. So do not let go of that opportunity. I would suggest you do try out that practice puzzle because one, it will be a good practice for you and second, you'll learn to identify the, what do you say, the other techniques that we learned when we were doing the techniques for classic Sudoku because a lot of those techniques have been used in that puzzle as well. So do let me know in the comments how you, did you find this video as well as the bonus puzzle that is there. We look forward to your feedbacks and hopefully I'll have a video on the liar zones for you tomorrow. So till that time, happy solving.